in a coming few lectures, uh, we'll discuss about the uh, nuclear energy, nuclear power plants. So, before we start with the nuclear power plants, uh, I'll uh, like to brush up the memory of nuclear uh, science, uh, starting from the structure of the atom, chemical and nuclear reactions, nuclear stability and binding energy, radioactive decay, half life, nuclear fission, chain reaction. Because nowadays, our power generation is mainly dependent on hydropower and thermal power. We have sufficient reserves of coals, coal, uh, but the issue is related with the emission of carbon. So, in future, the power demand will increase. Our thermal plants can meet out the power demands, but the emission of carbon, which is which is the, which is going to the atmosphere, will lead to the global warming. So, we cannot use. Though we have reserves of the coal, we will not be able to use that coal for power generation. Now, the second is major source of uh, power is hydropower. Now, hydropower, if we go for the large dam, the gestation period is quite high; it goes up to twenty to thirty years and there are environment related issues also. Though we can go to the small head uh, power plant, uh, medium or low head power plants, a highway cannot be replaced by a number of small roads. Similarly, a benefits of a high head dam cannot be replaced by a, a benefits of from uh, the low head dams. So, but if we go for the higher dam, then the submerged area is more and there are, uh, I mean, environment related issues. Now, third option where bulk of power is generated is, is left us with with us is a nuclear power. Right. Nowadays there is a lot of emphasis on the solar power as well. But right now it is okay, but we do not know after down the 20, 30 years when these solar panels will become, I mean they will live their life. So, disposal of solar panel may also become an issue. Now, in solar power also by say localized heating, we are also creating localized hot spots and that may also change, I mean change the environment of a particular locality. I mean these studies have to be carried out, I mean we are not very sure about them. But for nuclear power, we are very sure. There are issues with related with the nuclear power also. I mean, main is the disposal of the used fuel, and a lot of work, research work is going on regarding the disposal of the uh, used fuel. But still, it can be considered as a clean power because uh, it does not add carbon to the environment. Uh, let us go back to the topics to be covered here. So, we will start with the structure of the atom. So, we know the all the matter composed of the unique particle that is known as atom. And you must have studied a lot about uh, the structure of the atom. I need not discuss there is a nucleus consisting of neutron and proton surrounded by the electrons, right. And When we talk about the material which is used for the nuclear power plant, it is a radioactive material. So, radioactive material we will take up later on. Let us talk about the size of the atom. Let us have some physical idea about the size. So, normally the radius of the nucleus is the order of 10 to power minus 16 meters. It is 10 to power minus 6 angstrom. Angstrom is also a unit. So, it is 10 to power minus 16 angstrom. And if you go for the radius of the atom, then it is 10 to power minus 11 angstrom. So, there is a large gap between this and this, right. Now, after this, the radius of the nucleus and the radius of the electron, the nucleus consists of the neutrons. The mass of a neutron is 1.674 into 10 to power minus 27 kgs. Mass of a proton 
is 1.673 is approximately same 10 to power minus 27 kg, but mass of the electron is much much less 9.101 into 10 to power minus 31 kg. It is much much lighter than this and the elements which have same number of protons have uh, same type of physical properties, right. There are other elements also, uh, other particles also which are known as positrons, positron. Positron is positively charged electron that is known as positron. Neutrino. This is tiny particles, they are ejected, they ejected uh, the beta particles, they are known as neutrinos. Now, there are two types of reactions, chemical reaction and nuclear reaction. The heat is also liberated in chemical reaction. Suppose we take C plus O2, this is very simple, I mean you burning of carbon, oxidation of carbon, CO2, only 4 electron volts is released, right. And 1 electron volt it is work to move electron uh, in 1 volt potential difference. So, it comes out to be 1.6021 into 10 to power minus 19 joules is equal to 4.4 into 10 to power minus 26 kilowatt hour. Why I am giving this figure? Because when we will do the calculations regarding the nuclear power plants, these figures have to be in our mind. Uh, now, when the size of the atom grows, the number of neutron and proton increases, neutron and proton increase at the same time number of electron also increases and at a certain level it becomes difficult to keep them close, especially neutron and protons to bind them together. So, some energy is required always not only when the size is large, but for the smaller atom also some energy is required to keep the neutrons and protons together and that is known as binding energy. If binding energy is more, the atom is stable. When the binding energy is less, it is, it tends to disintegrate and those atoms which, which tends to instigate are useful for nuclear energy because when the disintegration takes place, a lot of energy is binding energy itself is released, right and, and a lot of energy is generated. So, if you look at the sum of the neutron and proton, sum of the mass of the neutron and mass of the proton, it exceeds because because mass now we consider the mass can be converted into energy and energy can be converted into the mass. So, we need binding energy. So, mass of the proton and mass of the neutron if you look at it exceeds the total mass of the electron and where from comes the delta E that is known as binding energy delta m c square. Suppose there is a 1 gram of matter. So, delta E is going to be equal to 10 to power minus 3 because we are converting into kilograms 3 into 10 to power 8 this is speed of light m c square it is 9 into 10 to power 13 joules it is 9 into 10 to power 7 mega joules it is quite high right. So, only fraction of this mass in neutron and proton which is used for converting which is converted into the binding energy and which puts together uh, neutron and proton. Now, there is another uh, unit which is known as atomic mass unit AMU. Now, atomic mass unit we say we take carbon atomic weight of carbon divided by 12 and if we take uh, 1 kg of carbon it will contain as per the hypo, uh, this is Avogadro hypothesis 6.023 into 10 to power 26 atoms of carbon, right. And this divided by 12 will give 1.66 into 10 to power minus 12 
uh, sorry not 12 sorry it is 27 kg this is atomic mass unit. So, all the uh, value related with the mass of particles of, of, of an atom like neutron, proton, electron is always expressed in terms of AMU. Suppose this atomic mass unit I want to convert into the energy. So, it is going to be 1.66 into 10 to power minus 27 into 3 into 10 to power 8 square it is going to be equal to 1.49 into 10 to power minus 10 joules. Now, this 4 point 1.49 next this 1.49 into 10 to power minus 10 joules if I want to convert this into the electron volt then 1 electron volt is 1.6 into 10 to power minus 19. Right. So, when I convert this into the electron volt, we get 931 million electron volt. So, 1 AMU can generate 931 million electron volts, that is quite high energy. We can take one example of helium. Helium has atomic mass 4, atomic number 2. So, it has 2 electrons two neutrons, two protons and two electrons. Mass is when we do the mass spectroscopy of helium of helium, we get uh, mass of the helium and then we get the value 4.00277 AMU. When we calculate the mass by analytical means, we get 4.03314 AMU. So, there is a difference and this difference goes in the form of uh, binding energy. So, delta M is equal to if you take the difference, it is 0 0.03037 AMU. And if you multiply this by 931, you will get 28.2 million electron volt. So, this is the binding energy which is available for helium. Now, helium has nucleus which has 2 neutrons and 2 protons. So, binding energy per particle is 282, sorry. 28.2 divided by 4, 7.05 million electron volt. It is stable, 7 is good, good enough. I mean, more is the binding energy, more is the stable as the atom. It goes up to, say, for iron, it is the maximum close to the iron. It goes up to 8, 8 point something, 8 more than 8.5, right. The moment this binding energy reduces for heavy metals, for this radioactive materials, it goes down. That is why slight with the slight excitation, the nuclear disintegrate or the emission of the particles takes place. Uh, for example, for deuterium, the binding energy is only 1.115 million electron volts per neutron or nucleons, it is so low. So, so, for example, we can take uranium 238, atomic number 92, atomic mass 238, it is 92 protons and 146 neutrons and same 92 electrons, it is quite stable. right but if you take uranium 235 it is quietly unstable due to the fact that it has much lower uh, binding energy than this one okay now if you look at uh, the if you draw a curve for different uh, mass number 
and uh, this is negative binding energy. So, you will get a curve like uh, this and iron is somewhere here and it is approximately uh, approximately 60 and this is 9 and this is 8. So, iron is somewhere here. So, it is the most stable uh, that is why I said it is the most stable uh, element right. Now, when radioactive decay happens I mean disintegration of uh, uh, disintegration happens then there is a life for every substance right. We normally consider in, in the nuclear engineering we are normally considered with the half life, half life of a substance. So, half life is when the mass of the substance is reduced to half that is half life and uh, you will find some of the isotopes uh, which have low uh, mass for example, krypton 40 sorry potassium 40. Potassium 40 is it is naturally radioactive. It, uh, there is a normal perception that heavy those who have ha elements those who have very high mass are radioactive. Like some of the examples are like this potassium 40 or rubidium 87 this is also uh, uh, radioactive. Indium 115 this is also radioactive and during radioactivity alpha, beta and gamma rays they come out of the substance. Alpha is I mean like helium as you you may be knowing all these things. Now, gamma is a uh, high frequency low wavelength electromagnetic radiation. So, gamma penetration power of gamma is very high. Even a thin foil of say 1 mm thickness can stop the alpha particles but not the gamma particle, gamma rays. Gamma rays even can penetrate the ceiling of the house. I mean their penetration power or the energy level is quite high. Now, I will give you an example of alpha decay. Suppose, alpha decay is plutonium 239-94. If alpha decay is done, then plutonium 235 here 92 plus helium, right beta decay suppose lead 214 and 82 it causes bismuth 214 83 plus electron 0 minus 1 plus neutrino and gamma radiation this is for the not for the beta but for the gamma radiation so if you open a book on any any book on the nuclear science you will find an n number of equations uh, how the uh, I mean radioactivity decay takes place in different substances. There is a positron decay also there is very that is very interesting positron decay. So, in this what happens excess protons converted into the neutrons. right for example nickel 137 c 136 plus e 0 plus 1 or p 3015 is converted to silicon 3014 plus so this type of uh, reaction also takes place Sometimes annihilation process takes place. This positive electron it, 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 it combines with the negative it combines positron will combines with the electron and enormous amount of uh, energy is liberated. That is known as annihilation. And uh, suppose there are two electrons, so two into their atomic mass unit is 0, 0, 0, 5, 5 and 931. It is going to be 1.024 million electron volts are liberated when annihilation of electrons takes place. Now, we will discuss about the half life right. Now, radioactive decay of any substance is a first order reaction. So, d n 
by dt is equal to minus lambda n right. So, here we can take d n by n is equal to minus lambda d t or natural law if you integrate both the sides integrate both the sides d n by n is equal to minus integrate lambda d t this is 0 to t this is initial and this is after time t we will get natural log n by n o is equal to minus lambda t or n by n o is equal to e to power minus lambda t or n is equal to n o e to power minus lambda t. Now, half life when n is when n is n o by 2 that is known as half life. So, when n is n o by 2 in that case n o by 2 is equal to n o e to power minus lambda t. So, t half is going to be equal to uh, this is half natural log of half minus natural log of half divided by lambda right and it is going to be equal to uh, 0 0.693 by lambda right. <laughs> Up now in this case for example, Krypton if you take Krypton 87 half life is 76 minutes. If you take radioactive this uranium 235 half life is 71 point into 10 to power 8 years. So, radioactivity is also having uh, unit. So, one unit is Curie that is equal to 3.651 into 10 to power 10 disintegration per second and another unit is Q u becquerel it is equal to 1 disintegration per second. Now, similarly if we take the half life it can be half life can be polonium 214 can be 170 microseconds as well. Carbon 14 half life is 5100 years, thorium it, it goes up to 10 to power 10. So, it can vary from a few seconds or milliseconds or microseconds to millions of years. So, if, if phenomena comes the average life, what is the average life of uh, radioactive material? Average life. Now, in order to find the average life that is t, we will integrate 0 to infinity minus t d n by n o and this will give lambda n o 0 to infinity t e raise to power minus lambda t divided by So, average life t is equal to if we integrate this and with this n o will be cancelled out minus t e raise to power minus t lambda minus e raise to power minus t lambda divided by lambda 0 to infinity. Now, if you are putting infinity here at t they will become 0. Now, we are putting 0 and they are becoming equal to 1 by lambda. So, average life is 1 by lambda, half life is 0 0.693 by lambda. So, average life of any radioactive material is 1.445 times the half life. Now, 
for the power generation, a chain reaction is required, chain reaction. Chain reaction. In chain reaction, what happens when low energy neutron which strike the heavy nucleus, right? Then disintegration or decay of this nucleus takes place and enormous heat is liberated. And at the same time, when suppose when neutron is striking this nucleus, more more than one neutron will leave this after disintegration, more than one neutron will leave this nucleus. Suppose there are three neutrons one neutron low velocity if it is a high energy neutron then it will penetrate. So, low energy neutron will go and strike the nucleus. Now, radioactive decay will take place which will contain three neutrons also and these three neutrons will again strike another three this is how the chain reaction takes place. It will again strike again next three nucleus and in the next three nucleus again three neutrons and this chain will continue in GP. It is a fast reaction it continues in GP and uh, that is why there is a term K which is neutrons in any generation, this is first generation and so this is second generation. So, neutron in any generation divided by the neutron in previous generation, if it is more than one the chain will continue, otherwise the chain will die out and through this process and this is the basic of uh, nuclear power generation in nuclear power plants. And in nuclear power plants for the reduction of the speed of the neutrons, moderators are uh, provided. So, uh, moderators are provided and these moderators they retard or they uh, reduce the, the, the kinetic energy of these neutrons. So, that proper fission or, or the chain reaction can take place. So, further on this regarding the power generation in the nuclear power plant we will discuss in the next lecture. This is all for today. Thank you very much.